Hi everyone, this is Sarah from Japan, and welcome back to another Biblical uh, Prophetic Read Along. Um, today we will be reading out of Amos, Amos chapter 3, and hopefully on, uh, 4 as well. So if you don't have your Bibles, please pause the video and go get your Bible, okay? because it's important to, to learn to read along so that you know, um, so you won't be deceived. All right. So, uh, chapter 3. Hear this, word, hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, okay. You only have I known of all the families of the earth, because Israel was chosen by God. God chose to make Israel this great nation, you know. And he has shown um, great favor to Israel. And this is, you know, their unfaithfulness is how... They repay him? I mean, really. Okay, so, uh, you only have I known of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Because they've taken advantage of that. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Please underline this passage. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Well, can they? Um, you know, I, I think about the... Uh, wide road that leads to destruction and the narrow way, the narrow road that leads to the straight gate, and few are on it, okay? So, um, obviously, the wide road and the narrow road are two different roads, right? So, you can't be walking on the same road, you know, with someone who doesn't obey the gospel of Christ, who doesn't obey his commandments, obviously, because they're on the wide road, right? You'd have to agree with them in order to walk together with them, right? And Or they would have to agree with you and change, change up their ways to walk with you if you're walking in righteousness. You can't both walk, you know, different ways and be on the same road. That's not how it goes. It's also, too, like, I liken it to a, an escalator. Okay, say there's two people. There's a, a person going up, going up the up escalator, and there's someone going down the down escalator, right? And they're holding hands, right? Well, you know, if they hold hands, eventually someone's got to let go because, you know, either the one going up will fall backwards or, you know, or get their arm torn off or something, you know, or the one going down will be yanked up or something, you know. So they, it's, they obviously cannot hold on to each other going different directions, right? So we cannot walk with other people unless we be agreed, okay? So righteousness cannot walk, walk with unrighteousness, and we need to make a decision. There's so many wishy-washy, sitting-on-the-fence people out there, and they don't want to make a decision. Ultimately, you will end up with the backsliding or the, the sinners, the ones who love the world. And if you love the world, you're an enemy of God. Okay, so you got to make a choice. Choose Jesus or the world. Okay, and the world and the people and the things in it are perishing. But Jesus is the one with eternal life. Okay, moving on. Verse 4. Will a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? I don't think so. Will a young lion cry out of his den if he has taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth when, when no gin is for him? There's no, no bait. Uh, shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Because it's, the trumpet is a warning. People are going to be afraid when they hear the warning. Reminds me, uh, now in their day they had the trumpet, and uh, we have something similar over here when there's an earthquake. It's like a warning, right? It happens about 20 seconds before an earthquake hits. And I just want to show it to you. We have this. It goes off all the time. It's actually quite nerve-wracking, especially, you know, um, when, say, for instance, you're in a train, of people and everybody's got a cell phone you know and the warning goes off and you hear about you just hear this warning sound and just like like crickets all around you 
and it's quite nerve-wracking. So this is kind of like what it sounds like. I'll show you. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. So, and, it, and when people hear that, it naturally makes us nervous. So when a trumpet is blown in the city, well, you know, the people are going to naturally be afraid. Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord has not done it? Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Yes, he does reveal his secrets. There's a lot of secrets being revealed to those who are, who are abiding in him, who are his true saints. Those are the ones who are his prophets, the true saints, the ones who are abiding in him. Not everybody is given the gift of prophecy, but the Lord speaks and reveals different things to people who actually, really, truly, with all their hearts, seek him out. Okay? See, he reveals the secrets because, you know, he doesn't, he wants his people to be safe and he, he tells us what's going on beforehand. Okay? So via the word, via dreams, um, it, sometimes in your prayer time, he speaks to us. You know, if you're really praying in the spirit with him, he, he reveals things to you. You have to seek his face and you have to really, truly love him. Okay, so the lion roared. The lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken, but who can, who can but prophesy? Publish in the palaces at Ashad and in the palaces in the land of Egypt and say, Assemble yourselves upon the mountains of Samaria and behold the great tumults in the midst thereof and the oppressed in the midst thereof. For they know not to do right. For they know not to do right. They don't even have that knowledge, the wisdom to, to know what's right and wrong. It sounds like now, it's like this, this generation is all topsy-turvy. And it's, it's written in uh, Isaiah 5. Woe to those who call uh, good evil and evil good, who uh, put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. It, you know, they don't know the difference between right and wrong. They've turned everything upside down. And it's a lot like the generation that's now. We, we take a look at uh, all these books, um, from, from Isaiah to now, all the way through Micah, and we are mirroring the time of Jerusalem, of, of the time of uh, Israel's judgment here, going into captivity. And they were warned time and time again, and they would not turn from their uh, sins, and they, they would not repent. And so eventually they went into captivity because of their disobedience and their rebellious hearts. They just would not, they loved their sin more than they loved God, even though, you know, he favored them among the nations. He did all these things for them. And it's like that now with us, especially my home country, the United States of America. It's so sad to watch it, you know, watch my country just totally go into depravity like that. But it's because people will not, they have hardened their hearts, you know, and they will not turn back to God. Okay, so, uh, publish in the, I'm going to read again from verse 9. Publish in the palaces at Ashad and the palaces in the land of Egypt and say, Assemble yourselves upon the mountains of Samaria and behold the great tumults in the midst thereof and, and the oppressed in the midst thereof, for they know not to do right, says the Lord, who store up violence and robbery in their palaces. Who store up robbery, violence and robbery. There are, uh, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, an adversary there shall be even round about the land. They're going to be surrounded by their adversaries. And he shall bring down thy strength from thee, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. Thus saith the Lord, as the shepherd takes out of the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece, or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be taking, taken out that dwell in Samaria, Samaria in the corner of a bed and in Damascus in a couch. Hear ye and testify in the house of Jacob, says the Lord God, the God of hosts, that in the day that I shall visit the transgressions uh, of Israel upon him, I will also visit the altars of Bethel, and the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. And I will smite the winter house with the, with the summer house, and the houses of ivory shall perish, and the houses shall have an end, says the Lord. Okay, so... Hear this word, ye kind of Bashan. Kind is uh, in the Strong's Concordance. Uh, it's Hebrew for cow or heifer. Okay, and in my last video, I uh, included a video in the description box from Sandy, um, who does LEOC 9, her channel. Okay, and uh, she had a vision 
of the fat lady dancing, okay, which is very similar to what is talked about here, the cows of Bashan, okay, the kine of Bashan. That's, uh, again, Strong's Concordance uh, 6510. You can find that. It means heifer. All right, here this word, ye, uh, kind of Bashan, that are in the mountain of Samaria, which oppress the poor, which crush the needy, which say to their masters, Bring and let us drink. The Lord God has sworn by his holiness that, lo, the days shall come upon you, that he shall take, away with, take you away with hooks. And in that day, they literally did put hooks in their flesh and pull their captives away, these Assyrians. Okay? So, uh... And your posterity, posterity with fish hooks, and ye shall go out at the breaches, every cow at that which is before her, and ye shall cast them into the palace. Say, and ye shall cast them into the palace, says the Lord. Come to Bethel and transgress. Come and sin. Go ahead. That's what you're going to do anyway, right? The Lord is saying. He's being kind of um, he's showing his disgust here. Come to Bethel and transgress at Githel. Giggle and multiply transgression and bring your sacrifices every morning. See, you're going to go ahead and sin and keep on bringing your, your nasty junk with you, your nasty spiritual junk with you. And then, you know, go ahead and be a hypocrite and sacrifice. He's, he's telling them, you know, what, what hypocrites they are. And look at us, too. We're kind of hypocrites, too, you know, in this generation. Bring your sacrifices every morning and your tithes after three years. And offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with, thanksgiving with leaven. Now, leaven is yeast that makes the bread rise. And it says that a little leaven, uh, okay, <laughs> leaven's the whole lump, right? It makes the whole lump grow. Leaven is like sin. It's, 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 awful. it's often, it's uh, often, it's often, uh, they use the word leaven, yeah, spiritual leaven as sin. It's like an acronym, not an acronym, but <laughs> not thinking, right? But it's, that's what they use, the word they use to describe spirituality. A little leaven leavens a whole lump, okay? A little sin makes a whole lump grow, okay? So bring in your, your uh, thanksgivings with leaven, with sin. And proclaim and publish the free offerings. For this liketh you, O ye ch children of Israel, says the Lord. This is just like you to do that. This is just like you to just, you know, you're mocking the Lord. This is just like you to do this, to, to sin and, and, you know... Go every day. It's like the, the church age, you know, like the church people now, you know, like from Monday to, to Saturday, you party up, you do whatever you want, you watch, you know, nasty videos, and, you know, uh, fornicate and gamble and drink and party and do all these things. And then suddenly, you know, on Sunday, we come to church, you know, we give our tithes and, you know, and um, it's all pomp and circumstance, you know. They honor me with their lips at church, and now they don't even do that. They don't even, they're too lazy to even honor him with their lips now. But, you know, um, but their hearts are far from me, That's what the Lord says. And this is just like you, he says. For this liketh you, O ye children of Israel, says the Lord God. And I, have, and, and I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities, and want of bread in all your pal places. Yet ye have not, repent, have not returned unto me, says the Lord. And also I have withholden the rain from you, when there was yet three months to the harvest. And I caused it to rain upon one city, and caused it to not rain upon another city. One piece was rained on, and the piece where, whereupon it rained not withered. So two or three cities wandered in unto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. This is the second time he said that. I have smitten you with blastings and mildew. When your gardens and your vineyards and your uh, fig trees and your olive trees increased, and palmer wood devoured them, yet, yet you have not returned unto me. It's the third time. He keeps calling them and warning them, and he sends punishments, to, you know, to wake them up, and they still will not return. Their hearts are hard, and they're they're bent on rebelling. Says the Lord. Verse 10, I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Your young men have I slain with a sorn. With a sword, I have, and have taken away your horses, and have made the stink of your camps to come up unto your nostrils. Yet have ye not returned unto me. It's the fourth time he said that now. Says the Lord, I have overthrown some of you, as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and ye were as the, a firebrand plucked out of the burning. Yet have ye not returned unto me. Fifth time he said that. Yet have ye not returned unto me. 
saith the Lord. Therefore thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. Because, because you will not turn to me, no matter how much I call you, no matter how much you go through, no, no matter what, no matter if I chase, chasten you, if I bless you, no matter what, you, you just bent on doing your own thing. So, fine, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. For lo, he, he that forms the mountains and creates the wind and, and declares unto man what is, it, what is his thought and what makes the morning darkness and treads upon the high places of the earth. Of the, earth. the Lord, the, uh, the God of hosts, is his name. Okay, so um, I'm going to do one more chapter. I have a little bit of time, and I'll end it there. So on to chapter 5. Hear ye this word which I have, uh, I have, I take up against you, even a lamentation, O house of Israel. The virgin of Israel is fallen. She shall no more rise. She is forsaken upon her land. There is none to raise her up. For thus says the Lord God, The city that went out by a thousand shall leave a hundred. And that which went forth by a hundred shall leave ten. Wow. And to the, to the house of Israel. For thus says the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. Underline this. Seek ye me, and ye shall live. Seek the Lord, people. We need to all really be truly seeking him, not just, you know, pretending to be seeking him. You know? But seek not Bethel, nor enter into Gilgal, and pass not unto Beersheba, for Gilgal shall, shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to naught. Seek the Lord, and ye shall live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph, and devour it. Devour it. it shall be none to, and there shall be none to quench, quench it in Bethel. Ye who turn judgment to wormwood, and leave off righteousness in the earth, seek him that makes the seven stars, the period, and was it the... Herides or whatever it is, the stars up there, and the Orion. Okay, seek him that makes the seven stars in the Orion and turns the shadow of, the, of death into the, into the morning and makes the day dark with night. The calls of the calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is His name. So seek the God of the universe. Seek the God who um, created the stars and created the morning and the night, who has the power to turn day into into night. Okay, seek him. The Lord is his name. Okay, verse 9. The strengthen, strengthens the uh, the spoiled against the strong, so that the spoiled shall come up, come against the fortress. They hate him that rebukes in the in the gate, and abhors him that speaks uprightly. Yeah, they do. And even in this day and age, the people that are professing Christians, like j just like these people are Jews, you know, they hate the ones that rebuke, you know, in the gate. And they abhor him that speaks uprightly. Okay, so they don't want to hear it. For as much, therefore, as your treading is upon the poor, and ye take from him the burdens of uh, him burdens of wheat, ye have built houses of hewn stone, but ye shall not dwell in them. Ye have planted pleasant vineyards, but ye shall not drink wine of them. For I know your man manifold transgression and your mighty sins. They afflict the just, they take a bribe, they turn aside a poor in the gate from their right, the poor in the gate from their right. Therefore the prudent shall keep silence in that time, for it is an evil time. Verse 14, please underline this. Seek good and not evil, that ye may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Hate the evil, love the good, and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord of Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of, of Joseph. Therefore the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord says thus, Wailing shall be in all the streets, and they shall say in all the highways, Alas, alas, and they shall call the husbandmen to the morning, to mourning, and such as are skillful of lamentation to wailing. And in all the vineyards shall be wailing, for I will pass through thee, saith the Lord. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Yeah, like it's some big joke. There's some people that, you know, they, they desire the day of the Lord and they get all excited like it's a big movie event or something, you know. Um, and they're, <laughs> they're posting videos and stuff, you know, trying to hype it up. But it's not going to be a good day. It's going to be a terrifying day. 
and you better pray that you're not here when it happens. You know, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts, because they're doing it with the wrong heart. This is like with Cain and Abel, you know? Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy viols. Viols, I think. But let judgment run down as waters, and righteousness is a mighty stream. Have ye offered up unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch, and Chun, and Kiun, your image, the star of your God, which ye have made to yourselves. Therefore will I cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, says the Lord, whoso, whose name is the Lord of hosts. Okay, so that concludes this read-along for today for uh, chapters 3 through 5 in the book of Amos. I love you all. If you have a prayer request, um, please let me know. I love to pray for people. All right. Um, it's an honor to do so and uh, intercede. So please let me know. Um, with that said, I bless you in the mighty name of Yeshua Mashiach. I'm out. Goodbye.